Welcome back to the S Girls Basketball Podcast. We hear from real women, real ballers, and real stories. Today, we have a returning guest, Jess, and I'm so pumped because now we get to have Emma on the podcast with Jess, and it's going to be a super fun conversation because as a little introduction, if you guys didn't know, Jess was on before, like I just said, returning guest, but when Jess was on, she just opened up her facility. So now it's been about a year. We're going to just check in with her, see the progress, see what she's learned and what advice that she can give back. So, Hey Jess, how you doing? What's up? How are you guys? Excited to be back on. Great. It's awesome. Well, Jess, just give us a rundown of who you are really quick. Um, for those who, um, did not see your last episode. Okay. Yeah. My name is Jess Roz. Um, I am a WNBA pro basketball performance trainer. I work with, um, all, you know, levels, youth all the way up, uh, to pro, um, with the basketball performance training aspect. Um, I own my own business. I'm 25. Uh, I opened up right before COVID, um, but got all my equipment, but really wasn't able to start until like June or July of 2020. Um, and then have been open up for a year and a half. Um, and just been training athletes of all levels, just trying to get them, you know, recruited specifically. I've worked mostly with high school um, and middle school and just like, um, you know, teach them, you know, the mental aspects, the confidence, um, and then the, you know, the physical traits are all just a byproduct, but with the overall goal of helping them, you know, earn a college scholarship or like dominate at that college level. And then I've ha- had the opportunity to work with like pro and WNBA athletes and just like really learn a lot about like their stories and things like that. So um, just operating in a space that's very male dominated um, and just trying to make my impact as a female trainer. Yeah, which is awesome. I definitely see it, especially like I've been seeing your TikToks blowing up too because we follow each other on TikTok. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And I'll be keeping and I'm like, okay, (laughs) Jess. At Coach JR Performance. I've had a couple, but like, as you know, as any video on TikTok that goes viral, man, the hate is just ridiculous. It's like, so the the TikToks that have gone viral, I've had like a couple um, that there's a lot of just like people that really just don't know what they're talking about, but just have something to say and just give out their opinion. So it's definitely like, it's a hard, there's a fine line. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. But it's also like, you got to definitely have that mental integrity to be like, Mm -hmm. you don't know what you're talking about. But like so many times, like when someone comments, I want to like comment back and I want to be like, you you don't know. (laughs) But you know, I just either delete it or I just ignore it. But um, like my girlfriend, Britt, here's all the time of me just like, like just being like, um, basically telling her what I want to say to them, but like, yeah, yeah I don't. <laughs> I try I not know, to and- but hey, it also shows though, like you're doing something right because yes. someone's got something to say. So yes, use that as it's helping. Like it's helping doing. the the algorithm, anyways. So I it's know the algorithm of the there TikTok. So it's like people yeah. don't know that when you are commenting, like I think mm-hmm. that's what gets the views. So yeah. it's yeah. like, thank you. So thank anything, you, <laughs> thank you for your comment. Yes, I know. Well, like it is crazy because like some of the TikToks I've had that have gained like more traction but it was based off of like I was either like stitching or duetting like something with women's basketball it was like like one time I it was like a funny trend where you put like you make it look like a Pinterest quote but it was like mean things people have said to you so I didn't want to like I love that what men say to women (laughs) athletes and I was like and then they go in the comments and they prove my point. Like, like, you literally just yeah literally I'm like bro you just I remember that what I'm trying to do <laughs> you got like a mil- like like um a couple like 10 to 20 comments that were just like I was like this is why <laughs> like, this is why we do man. what we do yeah like, exactly, whatever exactly <laughs> <laughs> no, <that's laughs> awesome. no for real like we can talk about that later because definitely this is something that I'm like very passionate about and I know you are too Jess, just with like TikTok and getting the voice out there but so last time we asked you the question of what was your biggest piece of advice that you give your younger basketball self but I'm switching it today to what is the biggest piece of advice you would give your younger trainer self? Yeah. So, um, you know, I would just tell myself like the truth, um, you know, it's going to be a lot harder than I think it's going to be. And so I'm going to be going through the mud a little bit. And that's kind of the analogy that I like to use. So, you know, I'm going to have a lot of ups and downs. It's going to take longer than I want it to. Um, and a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, I'm going to go through like a lot of situations that I wouldn't necessarily expect. Um, you know, I'm going to realize like, I've been in in an environment and I think this generation, you know, 25 and younger is in an environment that's very sheltered. Um, and we're living in like a filtered reality of social media, you know, Instagram, TikTok. Um, so, you know, 
the process from last time is like, you know, I would have just started the process of just like really breaking myself down mentally and just like discovering those hidden truths and the BS that I've just been telling myself and labeling myself as, and just the little bad habits, like mentally, and Mm -hmm. even just like everyday life that have just built up over time and just like really work on staying disciplined um, on working on myself every day. And so there's really like no success without adversity. Like you hear it all the time. Like you have to go through some adversity when you, when you want success. But a lot of the stories we hear, those people have already had success and they're already in it, but I'm not there yet. So like, I haven't made it. So like when you're going through that adversity, it's very hard and you feel like you can't relate. You feel like you're the only one going through it. So it's like, do you have that, the tools, do you have the mentality? Do you have the coping mechanisms, you know, the support in your life? Um, so everyone just sees this filter reality of social media and thinks that, you know, we're doing great or whoever it is that we're looking at, but like, you don't see the behind the scenes. Um, you don't see what it takes like stress and mentally, uh, stress wise. So it's like, I wasn't necessarily gifted with that ability to just like, let things go. Like I care too much. Mm -hmm. Um, or like, just be able to push past easily. Like some people have that ability. I do not. So I've really had to spend a lot of time on that aspect of my life. Um, and you know, I'm still going through that process. Like I'm still working on it. Um, but you know, so basically at the end of the day, I would just tell myself, you know, like, you know, you've been blessed with a really good life and really good health, but like this, this, you know, what you're about to go through is going to be really hard and you're going to have to step outside your comfort zone and you're going to, you know, you're going to see who's there for you and who really isn't. And I've had, you know, multiple experiences, you know, I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. Um, you know, I've made a lot of personal and financial mistakes. Um, and so, but I'm going to learn so much about myself and just understand what like that true grind actually feels like, you know, so when I'm out of the mud, um, you know, I'll appreciate it more. So something that I say to myself, like, um, often, and I reflect on is like, when you're always fed, you're never hungry. And I can say that again. Mm -hmm. So when you're always fed, you're never hungry. So if I'm just always fed positivity and greatness and no obstacles and no challenges, like I'm not going to appreciate when those good things come. So if I do go through the mud and through the shit, like, you know, I'm going to be able to appreciate those good things when they do come and be able to like reflect on them and just be really like learn gratitude and gratefulness. That's a word. I don't think that's a word, but yeah. (laughs) Gratitude. (laughs) We're making a word today. That just summed it up. Like, dang, I was so close. Wow. No, that just like was the icing on the cake. I just, yeah, mic drop that. We're done. Whatever. (laughs) Yeah. But no, I just think it's it's so crucial. And I love how you said we're like filter covered in this generation in aspects of social media and even in like our regular lives because Mm -hmm. we think it's, especially this generation, we think it's, so easy in certain aspects the way we've been raised or whatnot and what we've been granted and what we've been fed but when you hit that diversity that first time sometimes you break down completely and you're like what is this I've never had this is it going to be like this I don't want to go through this but that self-gratitude of actually being like hey let's be honest with myself how can I get through this what can I do what am I struggling with what can I work on to then get through it myself that's going to be a greater feeling than anything that anyone could ever give you any right. positive comment that anyone could ever give you yeah and for you to preach that working with the kids that you're starting in the youth even I'm sure some adults today still need to hear that like mm-hmm. that is a huge message right there and that that's what stuck out to me and I think that's yeah. great that's awesome amen <laughs> no that was so yeah. good and uh, it, one thing um that two things that I took from that is one I've learned this the past year is there's always purpose to your pain you're never going to go through something that's extremely hard just for the heck of it you know what I mean there's always something on the other side but that's that make or break type of situation we're talking about are you gonna let that pain and that adversity and those hard times just kind of make you like just curl up in a ball and just give up are you gonna keep pushing past it because a lot of times that hardest little like that rock bottom almost hardest time literally the next little step is the breaking point yeah so it's like you have to keep pushing through that. And then two, uh, the other thing that I want to like, just encourage you with is, and what I thought was awesome is the fact that you're willing to go through it. You know what I mean? A lot of people aren't willing <laughs> yeah. to do that. And the thing is, it's going to show it's going to pay off. Like you said, once you get through that mud, like you're going to start seeing and that breakthrough is going to happen. And the thing is, is like, you're setting that example for your athletes, you know, they see it. Mm-hmm. And then that's going to make them be like, well, if Jess can do it and Jess has done it. I can do it. What makes her different than me in that aspect? And that's, that's an encouragement of like a leader that you are. So I just think that's amazing. I'm really happy that these ladies get to 
be trained under you and from all levels. That's the thing is, is like a lot of times, you know, we're like, oh, like these middle school, high school girls need it more. But I, we've, you know, we've talked to so many big time yeah. players who are going through the same thing. Some of these high school girls are going through and they need it too. Right. So there's encouragement on all aspects with that. No, it's definitely totally agree with all that for sure. Yeah. yeah and one thing that was really big as well is like, now that I'm like playing it all re over in my head, it's like, you understand, like you have a plan in your life and you know, that plans change, but you know, like ultimately like, there is a goal, like in the end, like you said, you don't know what it is, what you're going to go through, how you're going to get there, when you're going to get there, <laughs> oh, yeah. but you know, you got a plan. And like, that's huge because some people don't even realize they have a plan. Like we're all put into this world and like destined for some sort of reason. And it takes going through the mud. It takes being mm-hmm. kicked down. It, it takes being halted for a little bit to be like, you know, this has happened over and over again, but I still got this fire in my heart. I want to keep going. This is what is for me. Yeah. And this is what I can affect other people with. And yeah. just the determination and how you said, like, you're not there yet, but girl, you've had this for like a year and a half <laughs> going. Like you probably have so many stories. Like to me, that's gold. To me, that is, yeah. that is a lesson. That is something you can carry with you that mm-hmm. someone can't relate to personally in the moment because it's the few the feelings the emotions the connections that you made so when you say that you finally made it girl your resume is going to be huge you're gonna have so (laughs) yeah I'm like what do you mean right I know you have like the last question yeah you have like the last question of like what cool things have you done and like I have done cool things and like people Mm -hmm. like from other perspective it does put it in perspective but like anyone with a goal like I'm never satisfied and I'm so hard yeah. on myself so it's like but yeah this yeah. stuff like going on podcasts and like you know talking about it like does put a fire you know underneath and does keep me going but like there have been many many times I've wanted to quit and I'm sure yeah. there will be more but <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah absolutely for sure absolutely. and going off of Emma you said something and I was like I literally posted this on my story yesterday and people were messaging me like oh Jay woke up and chose violence because it was like this thing that was like it so it, it was um from her name's Christine Kane and it says don't miss your purpose because you're waiting for your position and I'm like wow and that's mm-hmm. like literally what we're just saying like yep. don't be afraid yep. to take that step or like you were talking about mm-hmm. how you, you're seeing your purpose you know sometimes we want to sit back and wait for that job opportunity or we want to sit back and wait right. for it to be open but sometimes we have to be the one to take that step because when we take that mm-hmm. step then you you might see the door crack and that's all we need you don't need the door to go like this and like fling open you just need a crack just mm-hmm. to see it and I, that's what I think is so cool with your story Jess is like how you the timing of opening your facility it was in the middle of the pandemic, like you're right there at the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like most people would be like, oh shoot. You know what I mean? Like, right. Oh, like, like, I'm, I'm, done. Done. I'm, I'm, done. I'm sure oh, you yeah. thought that, I'm but out of my garage. Yeah. Yeah. Like I had to pivot for sure. Yeah. Um, but we so, like, I'll get into that whole COVID stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's what I was kind of just going to go right into. So with the whole COVID yeah. and wanting to start it up and whatnot, and just, you know, the ironic timing of everything. And you said like, you've always had this drive and desire, like when, you know, hardship comes, you're like, I'm going to pound through it, make a plan and whatnot. But this was COVID. So it affected the country. It affected everyone. It affected the world, basically. Yeah. What kind of mindset did you take in wanting to keep pursuing and like making contacts and making a building foundation during this time? Yeah. So like I said before, the honest answer of like how it's been since COVID to now, like through that whole transition, is it like, it wasn't easy, like at all. It's been really hard, but I've had like some really good moments too. So during COVID, like I had gotten, thankfully, like all my equipment, like March 6th or 7th next week, world shut down, like March 11th, 12th or 13th. I forget what day it was, (laughs) but like, I was like, I'm grateful for that. Like not good timing, but you know, I was grateful for that because I had all my equipment where a lot of people like couldn't get it because everyone just went insane and was like, I'm going to build my home gym now. So yeah. it's like I got all my equipment except for like a couple of things. It gave me time to like, you know, take my time in terms of like putting in the mats, the turf, like all the behind the scenes work that you don't really see painting all that stuff. Um, and I, was thankful that, um, you know, my gym was only about 15 minutes from my parents' house. So, um, I was able to work out of their garage. Um, and so from March until June or July, I was working out of the garage, going to like local fields and just like, but no one else was doing that. Um, and I, I had such a small gym and, you know, only like a certain amount of clientele that I didn't have this, 
you know, I had that, you know, the ability to do that. So, you know, that's like, it helped me, you know, COVID was like such a devastating time for everyone and people are still recovering from it. But for me personally, and, um, you know, COVID gave me an unrealistic view of how my business was going to look like, you know, you got no school, online school mm-hmm. transitions, you got no, barely any practices or sports, you know, everything shut down. Kids have more time to work out. Parents want them to work out more because they're not doing anything and parents have more time to drive their kids. So it's like people were coming to my garage um, or coming to my facility basically all of 2020, uh, 2020 mm-hmm. um, and then some of 2021. But then when the world started to come back to normal, it became more difficult, you know, for athletes to come in. So basically like my industry as a performance trainer, predominantly working with female athletes, I'm the last people that people think about going to, and I'm the first to go when things get difficult for them. So it's like, and what I mean by that is like, So when kids get busier and parents get busier, you know, I'm not what they think about. Um, I'm the first one to go because you got you got for an athlete at the youth or high school level, you got school, you got practices and tournaments like that. That's a given. You got to go to that. But then you have your skills trainers and then maybe you have your performance trainers. So it's like the the sports industry, just how it is and something that I hope changes, but I don't know if it will is like, cause it's just such a business oriented, like look at AAU, for example. Yeah. Um, I work with basketball and lacrosse athletes predominantly, but we can just talk about basketball and AAU. So AAU, um, the only time you actually see like actual true time to develop is in college in the NBA. AAU, you got two to three practices during the week. Mm-hmm. Then you got um, tournaments, three to six games, you know, they're developing so many deficiencies because, you know, during a game, you're going to play the best that you can. You're going to always go to your strengths. So if I'm a right-handed, if I'm a right-handed person or an athlete, you know, my right hand is getting way stronger than my left hand because I'm not using my left hand. I'm using my right hand to dribble. I'm using my right hand to shoot. If I'm always going up for right-handed layups, you know, my right hand's getting strong, but my left leg, because my left leg is the last to leave the floor, is always getting stronger. So it's like you develop all these, uh, you know, deficiencies. And then you also got, um, you got these clunky, big supported shoes. So they're always in their shoes all the time. I mean, if any of you guys play AAU, like, you never go out of your shoes. You're just always in your shoes Mm -hmm. all day, every weekend. So it's like, Mm -hmm. there's really no time to actually truly develop because at the youth level, it's like you play all year round at the high school level. You play all year round, except in the winter, it's your high school season rather than middle school. It's still a U season. And so most, most athletes after high school, they go to college. And then that's the time that you can truly develop. Um, You can have that time because you do have an off season. Um, But then you know, and thank God we don't have one and dones for the women's side, because if you look at the men's side, you know, they're one and done. They don't get that four years of development to actually like truly develop. So then, mm-hmm. you know, you look at the women's side again, if they finished at college, they're going straight overseas or they're going to the WNBA, which is 144 spots. And, the, you know, I would say 75% of those athletes are going overseas. So it's like, any athlete that I've talked to, most of those, you know, locations, they don't have facilities, they don't have trained professionals, um, you know, they have to work out on their own, um, you know, they learn from their college or what they learn from just like Instagram and social media and stuff. And so I've talked to many WNBA strength conditioning coaches, and a lot of these teams don't even have that. So it's like, it's constant basketball and just down the line you know, hopefully that will change where like female athletes can actually have a time to develop. We're starting to see it more. So it's like female athletes are starting to like want to come in and stuff, but you know, hopefully that there's that time for that off season work. And so then number two, what makes it difficult, like in my industry is the, you know, the number one is just how the sports industry and basketball industry is just made up. And then number two is majority of parents and young female athletes. They just aren't educated enough on the strength conditioning end, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a, you know, it's very male dominated and it's very egotistical. So it's like, you got the stigma of strength conditioning, which is all about getting jacked bodybuilding, you know, let's increase your, your squat, your bench, your deadlift. And so like many female athletes that I've talked to, they don't want to get jacked. Um, they want to maintain their femininity. Some do, some don't like, it just depends. And so, you know, it's my job and responsibility to educate them in like a way that they can understand that they can understand like, Hey, this is going to help you it's going to translate to this, not that it's going to work this muscle or it's going to improve your power or like, you're Mm -hmm. going to increase your numbers. Like they don't care about that. Like, is this going to help me 
stay injury free um, and improve my stats and ultimately get recruited. So, you know, the best of it, the best ability is availability. So if I have a lot of availability to be able to play, like, you know, yeah. I'm going to be able to have more of a chance to get recruited and it's just harder. So like, that's kind of like how it's been like, just trying to, you know, I've really learned a lot about what the industry is like. I've learned about like what, how parents are educated and it's just yeah. like, hopefully I can start to make that change, but it's been difficult getting female athletes to like come in when I'm like the last thing they think about and the first to go. So it can be really tough. For sure. Yeah. And it, it is hard, especially when I'm sure this is also something you've run into is we've talked about it before is the whole trusting factor in that because um you know parents here AAU oh I had to play on the best team who travels to every state possible every weekend we're gone this to get a college scholarship when in reality I know my story that was not it I still got a college scholarship you know what I'm saying I know a lot of other people were like that so for you and and like you know them saying because you don't have to deal with that with the men you know them like you can strengthen the men all they want and it's not about oh you're too big or you're bulking too much yeah. for women that's something right. that you have to take into consideration and mm-hmm. and all those things that you're talking about it's just crazy to me like the differences but see a lot of times like I feel like a lot of strength coaches don't think about that because they either get more males or it's just like the parents just kind of send the the girls off and they don't yeah. care you know what I'm saying I don't know it's like it, I know it's yeah balance between that but yeah I mean I think well, it makes me happy just personally as you know my background with like strength and conditioning as well just to hear you talk about that um, because it is important to not just like I don't know get in the weight room because you're supposed to get in the weight room like you're doing it to make them feel good to have better performance to help them in, with injuries to last longer you know what I mean because I know the minute I went to college, my body was done. Like it was just the craziest well, thing. Well, you like, had to go. You yeah. had to do strength and conditioning. Like yeah. you didn't have a choice. And that's like the one time that like collegiate athletes like finally get to. It's either when they get hurt or when they go to college and they yeah. have to go. Mm-hmm. So it's like yeah. teaching them to, I mean, they're never going to love the weight room. I know that female athletes and even male athletes, they don't love the weight room. They just want to compete and play unlike football yeah. um, where they enjoy the weight room yeah. a little bit more. So it's like, <laughs> if we can get that yeah. buy-in and that trust, but, um, mm-hmm. and that's what keeps them doing it. Um, so, Absolutely. but there's really just not a lot of education on it. And yeah. so I'm just, mm-hmm. it's just not tapped into. Yeah. And that's where I was really going to hone in on, on too, is like, as a basis of like anything that you kind of want to get out to people, it's information, lack of information or education yeah. of not really understanding what's going on. And when people think of like training right away, I'm sure they think, you know, get bulky, you know, get ripped, you know, like let's see some veins and whatnot. But do you guys know like dynamic stretching? That's training. Did you know like yoga, taking time to do that? Like that's training. That's mental training. That's body training. That's your body re- rehabbing for the week right. that you put in that work and whatnot. Recovery is it's all not, part of it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's not just like, hey, let's get in. Let's get ripped. Let's see those veins popping out or whatnot. It's not like that. Yeah. And I feel like information especially is just like, hey, we're not trying to make you into this model image that everyone wants. I want you to be healthy. I want you to know how to stretch when you're something's not feeling right. I want you to know how to safely train when you feel like something is hurting right now. And I want you to feel a growth and not just be like, you know, let's just come in, let's just do arms and legs and chest and back and everything. That's not yeah. how it's going to go. That's no, not it's, gonna it's go. not like that at all. But unfortunately, yeah. there's just so many gyms that are like yeah. that. So hopefully that like wasn't mm-hmm. too confusing that explanation. But basically, the overall no, message is like no. the sports industry on the women's basketball side and men's too, is just very on the women's specifically, it's just overseas or AU, AU mm-hmm. high yeah. school, AU. And then as you go up, it's college, you finally get that time to develop. But then once you go, the fault is like, it's it's overseas, 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 or WNBA overseas, WNBA overseas. And what you've noticed Mm -hmm. is the reason why like Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi and Candace Parker and Courtney Vandersloot, like those people are able to play until they're 35 and 40 is because one, they're sponsored and they're branded. So they don't have to go overseas. Mm -hmm. They have, you know, Candace has that ESPN job, like they have Mm -hmm. other jobs. And then they also invested in a, in a performance trainer and a strength yeah. conditioning coach. Yeah. So. It's about feeling good. It's not about like we keep saying, getting bulky or the strongest, because I'll say this, my senior year of high school, um, when I really was like, I, I want to get stronger, like just a personal thing. It wasn't even like a, um, you know, for whatever yeah. sport, I just wanted to get stronger. And then I remember 
going in and I actually felt slower and I prided myself on yes. my quickness. You know what I'm saying? So I had to tone it back down. And that was because I was lifting almost every day because of the class. It wasn't because of like, you know, because yes. obviously I've been blessed to have my dad, um, you know, help me with all of these things. But Which you knew. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew education. it. Yeah. I had that knowledge prior, but I was like, like, this isn't right. Yeah. yeah. And then he mm-hmm. even pointed out to me, I was sitting there. <laughs> I was sitting there in practice and he goes afterwards, he goes, you look slower. I was like, oh, dang. <laughs> like I was like, oh, no, yeah. No. Well, that's so, the problem with strength and no. conditioning coaches is it's like they put us a lot of gyms and a lot of trainers. It's very egotistical. So what I mean by that is they care about numbers and they mm-hmm. care about how you look rather than like, and what I've over the past year and a half, I've totally switched my velocity where 40 minutes is movement um, coordination, rhythm and timing, like injury prevention. Um, and then the 20 minutes is like, you know, what strength do we need? Cause we do need strength. I'm not knocking Mm -hmm. strength. You need strength. We need durability and resiliency, but like, how do we go about that? So it's more like I've changed my philosophy, but you have a lot of that just, you know, that put athletes, female athletes and through, and even any basketball athlete or lacrosse athlete, any, they put them through football training and it's not right. Yeah. Cause it will slow yeah. you down. And that's what happens at the college level. I don't know how your strength and conditioning coach was, but it's like, there's a lot that, um, they come back from summer or from their season. So jacked and yeah. they're slowing down. So it's yeah. like, yeah. then we have to take time to reverse that when it just shouldn't be like that. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The first Absolutely. year of my college, um, it was the coach that was our strength coach. And then the mm-hmm. second year I actually had a strength coach and I actually really liked her. I knew that she had, it was cool that we had a female cause Normally you get like, you know, nice. more yeah. males. And no, stuff. that's awesome really cool to have her. She was awesome. She's actually been on the podcast before, but yeah, no, I think that's like all amazing stuff, like what you're saying. And, and kind of, I just want to transition to this one question because I think it's perfect for you. Um, and that is like, how do you trust your hard work? Cause obviously you had to put a lot of trust in yourself and your hard work and just like taking that risk for your business. So how do you stay confident? when sometimes like you said you want to quit how do you what's like your process with that yeah there's like a couple different processes like obviously the support that I have um you know I have a very close-knit um very few but like I have my family I have my girlfriend I have people that I can like go to um that I can really like talk to like all that behind the scenes stuff that people don't see um like I you know like mentally wise so it's like I have that support system they keep me going Um, you know, they'll be, and then, you know, some of my close friends, like they, when I do make it in my terms or like whatever, like it will be because of them, like their support. So like that helps me continue to trust my hard work. But, you know, also the second process is like just working on myself. I've really had to like start working on myself mentally. Um, I'm very stubborn, so it's very hard for me to do. Um, but it's like, I've really had to, whether that's through like listening to podcasts or Mm -hmm. that's, um, taking notes, like, or that's, you know, finding other hobbies outside of my job. Like, um, like that's how I've just continued to trust my hard work. And just like the people that have come into my life, you know, that have supported me or the loyal clients that I do have that really do appreciate me. Um, that helps. And just like all the female athletes that, you know, I've talked to is like, they want to play as long as they possibly can and they don't want to get hurt. So it's like, if I'm the number one source of injury prevention, besides the next one would be like a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. Like I would say that I'm pretty valuable and that performance trainers are pretty valuable and strength conditioning coaches are pretty valuable. And so, you know, I believe that I have a product that no one has, um, you know, women's basketball, like we talked about is like not tapped into. So you got all these like different, I'll create like an analogy. You have all these different buckets to build women's basketball. Um, so it's definitely been building there's hype. So you got the bucket of like, social media and viewership and stuff like that, that's starting to fill, you know, Mm -hmm. you got, you know, the hype at the collegiate level for women's basketball, that's starting to fill. You got branding and sponsorships. Like we're seeing more people like investing into women's, um, you got the skills development. There's a lot of skills trainers that are now training that, you know, that say that they're WNBA skills trainers, which is pretty cool. So it's like, you're starting to build that. Then there's my bucket of the performance training, which is like not really that full. So it's like, it's slowly starting to, so it's like, I know that, you know, I just based off of what I I don't know if you guys know anyone, but I don't know anyone that is doing what I'm doing. So it's like, how can I like, I feel like that's pretty valuable. So it's like, Mm -hmm. I know that that means one, it's going to take a lot longer and a lot harder than I think it's going to be. But also like, um, you're going to start to see 
like a transition and hopefully like I can be like a leader in that. So which I think is awesome. I think that's the whole confidence piece though, is like knowing your value, even when you're feeling doubt, you still know it, you still keep it going. You know what I mean? You still understand like your purpose. And I just think that that's like amazing. And I know, like, again, like I said, being the leader that you are, that's going to rub off onto your athletes because that's the biggest thing with female athletes is we need to have confidence. You know what I mean? In such a male dominant area or always being told that we don't belong there. It's like, we're breaking those like barriers and like, you're being just a front runner of that, especially in the performance field. And I mean, cause like I said, I've been around it my whole life, strength and conditioning coaches my whole life, like going to these conferences and clinics and all of these things. And I always try to count the women. Like, I'm always like, how many women are here? You know what I mean? And and it's like not as many and specifically not as many women in basketball. A lot of it I've seen more like, like a track. um, Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. like those types of sports, not saying that I haven't seen, because obviously I do know some women at um, like uh, Tina Murray, she's the Sacramento Kings strength coach and stuff like that. So I've seen, you know, women, but from the performance side of that, very few, like you said. So I just think yeah. it's not a norm. Incredible. It's like not normal. So not it's like normal. when we see it on social media, it's like, that's great. But like, can this just be a normal thing? Like we don't celebrate a male right, coach right. becoming an NBA college, like an NBA coach. It's like, yeah. but we, which is cool. Like we need to celebrate. It needs to be coming to our attention, but hopefully it be- become like a normality where it's yes. like, oh, that's just how it is. Like, I love that. That's so, my, yes. That's you know what I mean. Talent. Like I that's do. what I just it just popped in my head. Yeah, I've made like, you got that. like Becky Hammond and like yep. a couple others that like are front runners. And like yeah. she even said, she's like, "Don't hire me because I'm a female coach. Like hire me because I'm like I'm yes. for the job." But yes. like we are celebrating all these changes in women's basketball, and that's great. I love that we need it because it really mm-hmm. like um you know really helps. But hopefully, it's just like also like why does why do we need like why, why do we need, do we to, need to you know you know yeah. so yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I've I love said that, that before. And, yeah. Yeah, you definitely have. And really quick, just um off like what you were saying, I love how you said like you've worked on yourself so much and you've realized you don't need a big circle around you to get to where you want to be. And I think off of spinning off of J2 is like where we compare to these male athletes and we want like this um, type of confirmation that we're doing things right from this person and that person in this organization, our teammates, our coaches, like everyone in our lives the moment like you can hone in and realize, hey, I need to work on me and whoever follows that is really there for me, I'm gonna see change. I don't need to be compared. I don't need you to say, hey, I'm just as good as them or hey, I'm getting there or whatnot. If I can focus on myself, keep my group small and be like, you know what, these people are around me because they see what I wanna do, that's gonna take me the longest way. And then you'll end up realizing who's with you and who's a follower and who's just not there at the end. Yeah. And I think it's it's crucial too is like, I'm realizing too, as like, I'm in grad school, I'm getting older and all this stuff. I'm like, you know, I don't talk to them anymore. They kind of fell off. You know, I got like yeah. three friends. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, mm, that's one job episode where it's like, let's hang out or something. I'm glad but, like, I, you, I'm not the only one. <laughs> no, 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 you're not. But, like, Very lonely journey. That, it's so no, hard to make friends. I think it's so cool though. Like if you take a moment to work on yourself and your dreams and the people who are there with you, it might take a little bit, but it's going to go way faster than if you were staying, trying to get everyone's approval, staying, trying to be friends mm-hmm. with all these people. Yeah. Work yeah. on yourself. And like you've been doing this past year and a half, I can't wait to see what happens in a year and a half from now. So yeah. I, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. All the blessings in the world to you. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. So Thank exciting. you. So yeah, exciting. Well, Jess, before we end up on the podcast, go ahead and let everybody know where they can find you on any type of social media website, whatever. Um, go ahead, plug that right now. Yeah. So, um, obviously I'm growing my TikTok. So at coach Jared performance, I feel like that's definitely the up and coming, um, you know, new social media. So you can find me on there. Um, Instagram is where I post a lot of stuff. That's also at coach Jared performance. Um, hopefully at some point I'll get like a YouTube and all that. I definitely want to get more into that stuff. Um, and just like try to make a more impact on different social media brands, but those are pretty much the two. Um, and people can reach out to me there, see kind of like what I do and stuff. Amazing. Well, Jess, it was so great Perfect. having you on again. I know we're probably going to have you on again after that. Cause I think this should be like an annual thing. We see like where, how right, much you're literally. making this impact. You get a reoccurring yeah. invitation. Yes. <laughs> oh, that'd yes. be cool. That'd be cool. And it's like going to be one of those things where I'm like, Hey, guess what? We had her first on the podcast when you blow up. So 
remember us. Right. That's, all, that's all I'm saying. Just remember us. No, I will. No, I really appreciate awesome. like you guys having me on and like what you guys do for the women's side. So um, definitely like super grateful for like uh, being able to tell my story and stuff. Right back at Absolutely. you. Uh, we just have a huge drive to know, you know, like the sport of basketball and like any sport that a woman is deciding to coach or train or go into, it has no judgment. And we're here to make a change and hopefully we can be at that point too where it's normalized we don't yeah. need the extra shout outs here and there and it's just something that's happening so for you to be a part of our process and to have such a great success story and star and journey you're just a huge key ingredient to this for us so thank you Awesome. Awesome. Love Appreciate it. you guys. Thank awesome. you. Well, again, everybody, thank you so much for listening to the podcast and just tuning in with us for season three. Uh, make sure to go check out Jess on all her social media and rate and review this podcast, as well as go ahead and follow us on at us girls United for just more amazing women that are resharing their stories and testimonies on this podcast. And we will see you guys next week. Peace.